Hi, everybody. Welcome to No Story is Sacred. If you've never listened before, basically we're four siblings who grew up talking about the art of storytelling. Now that we're adults, we're still talking about it, and we're inviting you to join the conversation. I'm Pippin, and I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. (laughs) (laughs) Going in hard right from the start. (laughs) Yee! I'm Alex, and I'm like a space werewolf guy space you, angel werewolf <coughs> space state you're right you're right he does have wings god <laughs> uh, i'm cat and literally my only problem with this film are the roller skates they could be a well, bit cooler we, right they- <laughs> yeah because that's your that's your only problem that is my only problem with this film well here's the thing i'm brendan and the roller skates were the one thing I liked in this movie. <gasps> Boom. Fight. Oh my, my fight. god. Fight. <laughs> and this corner we have <laughs> the person who's right. That's me. Uh uh objection, Your Honor. Flying roller skates. Yeah. They're cool. I- <laughs> oh, let's get some hockey into this movie about space angel werewolves, eh? Oh wow, I now have You're my correction, so we can stop that. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Pip, how did you know? How did you know where I was going to go with this? Damn. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this movie's case, goddamn flawless. I'm not going to back down. Except for the roller skates. This movie has everything. So, <laughs> today, <laughs> I want to tell the people what we're talking about. <laughs> today, we're talking about the 2015 film, Jupiter Ascending. They yeah, deserve to know. <laughs> Can they handle the truth, though? So spoilers abound. If you want, we've this- already spoiled the entire film at this point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you didn't have to mention the wings. Yes, I if did. It's want- an important part. <laughs> if you want specific content warnings about things we may talk about, check out the show notes on NoStorySacred dot com. Though, though. <laughs> I'm fairly certain <laughs> we, we might discuss uh, sexual fetishes, sexual Oof. fetishes, Oof. Uh, of a, uh, uh, not exactly mainstream nature, and of course bees. <laughs> Fucking bees, bees man. Um, and I'd like no, to say straight out right now, anybody who works with me or knows me personally, or perhaps grew up with me or anything, really, uh, I need you to turn this off right now. Just, just turn it right off. Basically, right. I need everyone to just quickly. Google Omegaverse. Nope. <laughs> There's a nice New York Times article about it, I guess, now. Uh, uh, the, wolf, oh, the, no. the New York Times article, for people who need to know if they want to listen to the rest of this episode, there you is go. titled, mm-hmm. A Feud in Wolf Kink Erotica Raises a Deep Legal <laughs> Question. So if you're turned off by the phrase Link- <laughs> Wolf Kink Erotica, leave. If you're now. turned on by Wolf King Erotica, maybe this, isn't the, maybe this isn't the podcast for you either. <laughs> it might be the time for some quiet contemplation. No. Or at least time to go to AO3. AO3. There's some tags that we can direct you to later. Go to AO3 for some ABO. <laughs> so, so for those of you who've never watched Jupiter Ascending and are more confused by this, <laughs> then, then you have been by anything we've ever said. The <laughs> summary, according to Google, is Jupiter Jones was born under signs of predicted future greatness, but her reality as a woman consists of cleaning other people's houses and endless bad breaks. Kane, a genetically engineered hunter, arrives on Earth to locate her, making Jupiter finally aware of her of the great destiny that awaits her. Jupiter's genetic signature marks her as the next in line for an extraordinary inheritance that could alter the balance of the cosmos. Okay. Or not. Okay, so All right, now we first. can go off the tracks. So wait, wait, wait. First things first. First things first. First things first. Yeah. Is is Jupiter Jones actually uh, the inheritor, or is she part? Of, or is this one great cosmic coincidence? Uh, so that's a really great question. Um, <laughs> is it? But, shut up. But um. <laughs> As pointed out by Kalike, I believe is one of the children's names. Genetics as uh, to the rest of the universe is is almost religion like at this point. So it does not matter that uh, her uh, uh, genetic code is 
either on purpose or coincidentally identical to uh, a an ancient and now dead space queen. The fact that there is any match whatsoever is within their understanding slash religion proof enough that yes, she is. Mm, space capitalism religion. Space capitalism religion. <laughs> space uh, space capital religion at a political complex. <laughs> Well, wait. Let's explain why. No. Oh, we forgot to we forgot to uh, warn for incest discussion. Damn it! Oh. Oh. By <laughs> the way, BT does. has everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pi- uh, okay, you know what? I'm going to take over. It's happening, Pippin. <laughs> wow! Oh, no. Fucking rude! How dare you? Listen, you brought me here for one fucking reason. <laughs> That's are- true. Wait, are we going to go into that reason right fucking now? <laughs> Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I mean, oh, I mean, yeah. I, I guess. Wait, 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 pip, pip, pip. Yeah. Uh, I think we have to, uh, we, we have to, uh, kind of activate the extra gates simultaneously. So that way cat can be all extra. So we have to do it simultaneously. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. Three, two, two one, one, click. Burr. You fuckers. <laughs> it's working. Um, anyway. So this movie is great. <laughs> uh, and, and the Google description, I have to say, is not just... It's accurate without encompassing the full glory of the film. <laughs> this movie is expressly... What's it called? Female... Female empower- gazy. What? Female yeah, gazy. Female gazy, female empowerment uh, fantasy, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, so Jupiter Jones is, a, a, is an illegal immigrant... Uh, so is all the rest of her family. You're named after her, the mythology's original fuckboy. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Jupiter? I thought Jupiter was the one who, like, had the hammer and shit. Zeus. Oh, fuck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fuckboy. All right. Anyway, <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, she's an illegal immigrant. This will become a, uh, and therefore, an illegal alien. Haha, <laughs> get it. Oh, whoa. Uh, she has a shitty life. She undeniably has a shitty life. Uh, she's not dumb, but she can't do much, because, again, vastly illegal. Not just, like, randomly from another country, but she was born, like, in the hold of a ship across the Atlantic. She's got nothing. Although I'm not sure when it, like, do ships have their own sovereignty? Yeah, captain. Okay. So does, like, the... Okay, whatever. Anyway. Uh, if if so that's not good. true, I encourage people to not let us know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's actually like whatever kind of uh, flag that you fly or something like that. I don't know. Anyway. We have people that we could actually ask if we cared enough to oh, look not. it up. Because you know what this movie is? This movie is a goddamn fantasy. Indeed. And, and I'm talking about in like a lot of different ways. It's science fiction. But basically, you say uh, what I know, Jupiter Jones uh, is living a shitty life. Uh, she has been talked into star- selling her eggs in order to get some extra money. Yeah, and uh, by the way, making it look super sketch when it's actually just a normal medical procedure. People do it all the time. It wasn't sketch until she actually got into the room. Is what I'm yeah, saying. Well, yeah. Um. But she, uh, uh, her family works cleaning houses. She ends up, you know, uh, uh, helping rich people who have stupid problems, which are particularly shallow compared to, you know, her very uh, real day-to-day problems of having to clean toilets on the regular. Anyway, uh, meanwhile in space. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile. We find out that um, there are lots of other people out in the universe there is a family. I know. There's a family. The family is called a Braxis. Uh, that, by the way, is the name of a demon. Uh, bet you didn't know that Greek demon. Uh, it is the uh, year god. You can get. Uh, you can write down their name by taking the numbers of the days of the year, adding them all together, and transposing them over into letters. And it spells out a Braxis. And once upon a time, back in the day, Greeks did that and thought, you know what? That must mean something important. We're gonna make it a god. Um, okay. Uh- Anyway, so time, get it? Okay. <laughs> so, so, so essentially the space, the space Borgias. Space Borgias, uh, there's three siblings, they all hate each other, it's really great, uh, and they all get together on a desolate planet, which has only recently become desolate, and, uh, they say, by the way, we found mom. Who's mom? It's Jupiter Jones. Dun dun dun. Fill in science here. 
There's genetics, a- genetics, genetics, space capitalism, genetics, genetics, genetics. Space uh, capitalism. Like, like, we definitely all, all hate each other. Or, but, uh, there is a definitely, a, we also definitely give each other looks that we have definitely fucked. Definitely fucked. <laughs> um, like all of them. A lot. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Yeah. They are all, uh, also space vampires. Um, oh, not in the yeah. traditional blood kind of way, but in the, uh, Elizabeth Bathory kind of way. Uh, they are definitely using, uh, humans. Uh, and it's quite, it, it's defined. Um, yeah. The reference is bathing in the blood of people, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. I just want to make that abundantly clear. Yeah. Instead of it being in red blood, it's blue glow or because space. Because space. Um, yeah. Uh, one tube of blue glow is a hundred human lives. Dun, dun, dun. And, um, and Jupiter drops one. <laughs> that gets casually dropped. And you need like 600 of those fucking tubes to make a gigantic bathtub for two seconds worth of, you know, dipping yourself. And then you get your youth to again. To be fair, that, yeah. that might have just been uh, on the part of one of the sister-daughter things. Uh, siblings. Eh. Just an extravagant show of uh, wealth. That's true. I mean, and she is super extra. Um, yeah. And that's true. Uh, everybody buys and sells time. We see uh, some mercenaries later uh, trade for some time. Time, by the way, is what those blue glow things, what they say it is. Because yeah. when you take some of it, uh, then you get young. Reverse. Uh, yeah. yeah. You get so, more time to live. Yeah. Exactly. But in order to do that, you have to kill lots and lots of people. So the way they've done it, they've decided that there are some people who are um, really people, and then there are some people who are cattle. And you f- you seed your various cattle planets to be like, well, those are humans, but, you know, they're going to be humans who we're going to harvest later. It'll be fine. Don't yep. worry about them. We're not going to give them any of our cool technology. We're not going to tell them that, oh, there's a big space out there. They were just there to get as much possible uh, uh humans grow in there um, and then we're gonna harvest the whole damn planet and turn it into blue goo and then we go on to the next planet uh, and, and this works out well for them uh, and no one at any point goes isn't there an easier way <laughs> like that, that seems like a lot of time effort and lack of morality well here's the thing you know i, I made a cloning tube over here it just makes no unidentified no you cells. can't do it's clones great. Kalike talks about that. There was a, it was like the banana plague. There was a disease early on. It fucked up all clones. Uh, so you can't do cloning. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So is, is Earth? So now we've the got space the space cabbage and, uh, clones. <laughs> what? Yes. We all <laughs> made the Cavendish clones joke. <laughs> all at the same time. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's almost like we're related. Weird. Yeah. But Earth is unbeknownst to all of us here. One of these harvest planets. Uh, the part where, uh, overpopulation is a problem that we talk about is in fact the point. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Even though, like, demographologists will, will point out oh, that we actually have a, a tendency to, uh, stop, uh, populating at a certain point. Shh. Don't bring real Space science. Space doesn't this. know about that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so in about a century, uh, cool, we'll be ready to harvest, apparently. Uh, however, shocker, one of these cows, i.e. us, turns out to be the uh, reincarnation, i.e. the genetic whoops identical whatever, of the mother of these three siblings, uh, who died a while ago, and... Uh, Within totally wasn't murdered. Totally wasn't murdered. For, Not at all. No, no. This family is the richest of. This is more than one family that does this harvest thing. By the way, um, this happens to be the story of the richest one. And so their mom comes back. Who is and what's Jupiter? Important hmm. is that when the uh, genetic successor or whatever is found, mm-hmm. they inherit everything that was yeah, their see, previous person's, uh, movie- and Earth belonged to her. Earth belonged to her. Earth was one of her planets from, uh, uh, of the various holdings that they have. Like, you know, it's like, who has what parts of the farm? That was hers. All of the kids are not entirely pleased that she's back. Or rather, the one who's the oldest, Balaam, played by Eddie Redmayne. Academy Award winner, Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne. I really <laughs> want to make that clear. <laughs> uh, who was told by the Wachowskis to act like an accountant. 
<laughs> oh yeah, he nailed that one. <laughs> Fucking Seems nailed fair. it. Um, Seems legit. Yep, yep. We're all like, what is your accountant like? <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, uh, he's the oldest. I will file it. <laughs> <laughs> He has the most to lose because he has um, the uh, uh, greatest stake. Uh, there's the middle daughter who um, uh, did not get along with her mother, but sees this possibly as an opportunity to become better friends. And then, of course, to get more holdings because they're friends now and or fucking. It's one or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's the youngest who was the uh, uh, mother's favorite, as it were. May or may not have known, it's difficult to tell, uh, that his mother's point of view had changed regarding um, this whole harvesting humans thing. It's hard to tell. He might have been lying. Uh, and he decides to solve this big problem of having the least holdings by marrying his mom, i.e. Jupiter. Yep. Yeah, that uh, was soups weird. Mm. Like yeah, so uh, there was this great joke. I, I passed it to the. Uh, I passed it to you guys uh, earlier today. Um, that that somebody on Tumblr did, which is that um, the Abraxas uh, siblings need to realize that fuck, Mary kill needs to happen with more than one person, and that person <laughs> cannot be your mom. Um, <laughs> like the basic rule right there. <laughs> anyway, um, no, this whole movie is about inheritance law, inheritance law, and and tax code. I fucking love it. Yeah. You um, nerd! You. What I love is that you went into all that. At no point did you really, really talk about Jupiter, nope. <laughs> or nope. any of the human people. No, nope. no. Or the Abraxases are human. That's the cool thing. We think that uh, uh, we on Earth are human. No, Earth is a planet that uh, was uh, seeded later. Um, so you didn't as- talk about Cain. You didn't talk about uh, Stinger. Stinger. <laughs> None of the protagonists. I talked about Jupiter and her family. Did you talk about her family? Did you? I mm-hmm. talked about her space family. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> would she uh, not? Oh my God, cat Jupiter. Jupiter is is just all the siblings are like, wow. So uh, mom's back. The second they find out that mom's back, like, if only one of them knew that mom was back, they could solve this problem easy peasy. Uh, not tell the others. Uh, and kill murder. her immediately. Uh, any number of things. But they all find out simultaneously because they all are fucking spying on each other constantly. Yep. Which means that they're all having, like, the, oh, mom's back. Oh, that's so great. It's so great. We should hold a Yay. party for her. Oh, my God. Um, and they all send, like, conflicting mercenaries to get her. Yep. <laughs> uh, which is the best. And that brings us to, thank you, our other main character, who is the mercenary who is hired by the youngest brother. Some might call this the A-plot. Fuck off. <laughs> 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 the youngest brother, whose name is Kane, one letter off from Canine, who is... <laughs> Uh, who is a disgrace. Whoa, I just got that. Really? No. Okay, fuck off. Well, um, look, here's the thing. I really only just got Stinger for Sean B's <laughs> character. <laughs> who is a disgraced Gene Spliced uh, soldier from a special Legionnaire thingy. He is disgraced because, uh, well, as part of his Gene Splice, he's part Lycant. So he's a werewolf. Cain is he's not. not to be f- clear, Cain, uh, Cain is not Stinger. Cain is not Stinger. Uh, but he, so he is part wolf, I guess, but not real wolf. Shrug. Space wolf. Um, um no, dog. Dog. Because we love dogs. He said space, like he said wolf back in the beginning. Later, when she's trying to get some of that, he says, I have more in common with a dog than I do with you. And she didn't even blink and said, I, I love, love dogs. dogs. I've always, I've always loved dogs. Loved dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the best fucking answer. Because that girl is going to get some Chatham, uh, Channing Tatum. And it does not matter that he has pointy ears or possibly other mm. fascinating nope. Uh, nope. Nope. physical nope. characteristics. Nope. <laughs> Moving on. Fascinating. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, uh, he's, uh, he's disgraced because he bit one of these, uh, one of the older family space vampires. And he's a bad dog. 
and <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. that's he's space that's, old jailer. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a bad dog. He was going to be put down. Stinger, his super not supervisor. What am I thinking of? His captain or something? Oh, so Stinger went to a, a canine rescue, and uh, and it's like, oh, they're they're going to be putting him down next week unless he gets adopted today. Yeah, basically. Um, and then they both were like, okay, fine, we won't put him down, but you both get punished, and you both get your space angel wings cut off. Because of course. <laughs> so anyway, Stinger goes to uh, Earth to chill out, I guess, for reasons. Um, he, well, he's got a, a daughter and. And I feel like this is important to point out. He's half Honey Bay. Yeah, he is. Because he's <laughs> also a gene splice. They all have special skills. That's why he's able to uh, evade the uh, uh, the swarm warhammers later. That's why he's part of that. It's because he can see swarms and like understand their movement. That was that not clear to the rest of you? <laughs> wow. Anyway, um. So as you can tell so far. One of us was heavily invested in this movie. Yeah. What I love is when I expected you to be on your bullshit for this, this was not the bullshit I was expecting. Listen. It's not the bullshit we deserved. It's the bullshit we need. Bullshit we need right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, do you want to go straight to the bullshit? I will. No, Don't even no, tempt me. No. Don't even. Whoa. Oh, by all means, you continue. Please proceed, Senator. <laughs> anyway, wolf penis. So anyway. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, God damn it. Oh. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Stinger's there, um, uh, They're on Kane, Earth. Kane is a bad dog. And so, uh, most c- lichens, if they get separated from their pack, um, die because they're pack animals. But he's hardcore. That's how it works. He's, you know, he's become a street puppy. He's a lone um, wolf. He's got a knocked ear and. <laughs> oh my god, he, oh, Alex. He's gonna I'm, adopt Oliver and they're gonna sing on the streets. Alex, I'm so fucking in love with the fact that you said he's a lone wolf, because that's exactly what they're going for. But no, he's actually a good doggo. And <laughs> they're all good dogs, Brent. Wait, 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 cat, cat, cat. Yeah. Do all lichens go to heaven? They're space angels, yes. <laughs> I mean, his wings were cut off, though, so. And all lichens go oh, to heaven, too. <laughs> the number two. Um, so. The thing is, he's he's never had a pack, and then, bitch imprints, so to speak, <laughs> imprints on Jupiter. Wow. Imprints hard. And he's all like, I have no pack, except this one. This one's my pack. And then he rolls over and gets his tummy rubbed. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm- but does he know it's not bacon? <laughs> does he know it's not bacon? Listen, he literally ends up like staring out a spaceport, wi- not, not spaceport, a space window with tears in his eyes because his master, mistress, <laughs> is on a planet getting quote unquote married to someone else, possibly her son. And he has been left behind like a bad doggo. I mean, I think he got, was that the point when he got captured? No, that's, uh, that's like, he got rescued again by the spaceship. He got, remember, he got airlocked, survived yeah. that. Yeah, he did. And then did, uh, what was the name, what's the name of that movie that came, came out recently about that dog that, that came all the way back home? It's Homeward Bound? I don't know. One of those, like, one of those, one of those Homeward happy, Bound is a classic one. One yeah. of those happy dog movies. Yeah, he Homeward Bounds to her. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, no, so he's looking out the window. He's like, no, I'm a lone wolf. I, I don't need this. I don't feel bad that I got left behind again. It's fine. And then and Sean Bean's just like, who are you fooling? Who are you fooling? Who's a good, who's a good dog? Who's a good dog? Go get her. <laughs> he Go get her. He kind of takes a biscuit, throws it out the airlock. Go get her. <laughs> wait, wait. And then he does. Okay, so quick question. What is Thinger's uh, hat in this race? And also the rest of her entourage that she somehow gets. Okay. I can explain this. Can you? (laughs) There's too much. Let me sum up. (laughs) (laughs) Stinger's deal. First of all, hey, wait, actually, let me back up. (laughs) Before I even start. Jesus Christ. All right, listening audience, I am actually doing this episode with a fever. If you, so I'd like to pretend that that's my excuse. But the rest of us know better. (laughs) Does anybody know why she's a fucking queen? Uh, <laughs> cause crickets, cause base religion. 
Genetics. She's a Your Majesty. The bees. The bees. Yeah, the bees recognize her. Oh Is it because God. capitalism's bullshit? Maybe. Yeah, she- sure. Anyway, uh... She ate a bowl of fucking jelly. <laughs> everybody's job is to... Uh, the entitled are like a noble class, okay? And she is like a top-tier entitled. Now, Stinger is from the military class, which typically uh, would protect entitleds. So it's a caste system. It's a caste system. Um, well, I mean, we kind of knew that because they already have, like, cow planets. Which, by the way, they harvest as Jupiter's eggs were going to be harvested. See, there are connections. Genetics. So, um, she gets Stinger because, uh, Stinger has the opportunity to become not, what's it called? Fire? Uh, exile? Yeah, they could get his wings back. Yeah. Well, step one is that he gets paid to double cross Cain, uh, to get the, uh, something to heal his daughter, whom he loves more than Cain. And I'm like, that's fucking legit. And Cain's like, no, that's true. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Like, yeah. yeah. You're loyal to your pack. I get that. Yeah, like, obviously. Are there any other problems? No? Cool. All right. Nice. And then after that, Kane, uh, I'm sorry, Stinger be- uh, is like, cool. Now that I have all of my, um, you know, personal shit dealt with, now I can go back to being a good soldier. Uh, so that's where Stinger comes from. Uh, Kane, of course, has a pack now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think he gets the uh, the sword Ted Sega, right? What? No. <laughs> Inuyasha reference. Oh, thank you for telling me for when I write up the notes. <laughs> it's a demon dog thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. He gets, uh, she gets the random robot dude on Bureaucracy Planet. I forgot about robot dude. Robot dude is there because she, uh, as a uh, entitled, as a noble person, uh, she is, is basically given uh, all sorts of free shit, including her own advocate, who is the robot dude. Right. There is a whole section that that highlights the fact that this movie is entirely about uh, inheritance law and tax code and shit, boring shit that I love um, because they do a, uh, a huge Brazil shout out um, by having them go through various levels of stupid bureauc- uh, bureaucracy. Space bureaucracy. Uh, and it ends with them seeing Terry Gilliam, who officially gives her the, uh, the stamp on her arm that says, by the way, we acknowledge that you are indeed a uh, space queen. Queen of space. Queen of space. Yeah. Um, and now you're fucked. And she's like, I'm sorry, what? And they're like, ha ha ha. ha. <laughs> Bye. Ha. Ha. Like, we're glad we're not space queen. She's like, why? But you'd be rich. They're like, ha ha ha. You have so many people out to murder you now. Say what? <laughs> Speaking of, do we want to get to the murder plots? I yeah, mean, let, I let's guess. get to that because we are 30 minutes in. This was all <laughs> very important. All right, go on. Pip, tell us about murder. Oh, I, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, otherwise I'm just going to keep talking about tax code. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That'll appeal to all two people. All right. So, I don't think the daughter's out to murder her. Just, you know, befriend uh, her to get shit. Just good time. Yeah. To get, well, because she was not as close, so she wants to get more shit from her mom. Yeah. Uh, so maybe there would have been murder down the line once the will was changed. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the youngest son, uh, as we've mentioned, wants to marry her. Then maybe murder her. <laughs> then murder her. Well, to get all of her shit. Legally. Yeah, so that he would be, so that he would inherit. Yeah. <sighs> and would be uh, able to keep it if she did, you know, come back. As apparently they do. And he got her to agree to marry him because he threatened uh, her very good doggo. Wait, no, no, that's not why. He didn't threaten the good doggo. He was lying the entire time about the good doggo. He was going to get the doggo uh, pardoned or space pardoned or whatever. Her, His real deal was he's like, by the way, if you don't marry me, somebody else might kill you. And then all your stuff would go to my oldest brother. My oldest brother, Balaam, Academy Award winner, Eddie Redman, <laughs> will harvest the planet Earth because he doesn't care. I care, just like mom cared. I care about murdering all these poor, helpless cows. I mean, people. But the um, immediate wedding had to happen. Like, and never mind the fact that I am currently young, and we have already established what it takes to do that. Yeah. But she's busily having everybody trying to murder her all the time now. That's why there's a... He's like, look, we gotta get this done as quickly as possible so that I can protect Earth. As opposed to, like, his actual bullshit reason. Anyway, who's explaining that you specifically gave me the reins? Well, you were telling it wrong. You went into tax law. Uh, 
Meanwhile, so, Eddie Redmayne, it's like Academy Award winner Eddie Redmayne, uh, just does it simply and kidnaps her family and threatens her. Yeah, uh, Academy Award winner uh, Eddie Redmayne gets to the brass tacks, <laughs> as it were, and space cops are all like, "You can't fucking do that." And Academy Award winner Eddie Redmayne is all like, "Um, I'm rich. I can do anything I fucking want. I own the space cops. Ah, capitalism. Ah, uh, police." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he he kidnaps her Earth family. One might argue that you could call them just her family. Hmm. Takes him up to I don't know it might have been Jupiter. Oh, it was. Uh, oh my God, it is Jupiter because oh, there it's fuck. in a giant storm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it, they're in the middle of like the red spot. Um, and of course, Earth cute. is at the moment one of his because his mom's dead. But then her mom comes back, so then it reverts back to her. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Which is why what he's doing is bad because really he's stealing someone else's property. Only. Which is why the space cops was going to get him. Yeah. Space Again, cops? I'm explaining this. Ugh. Yes. He kidnaps the family, takes him up to uh, Jupiter. Jupiter then goes up, uh. To, to Jupiter. To <laughs> Jupiter. This tells space cops, no, you can't come. Or no. Uh, anyone anyway, was all like, yeah, sure, the space cops could come. And then when Jupiter's ship got through, he shut the door so the space cops couldn't get in. Uh, yeah, it was like an innocent person would. Well, because when you're rich, they just let you do it. Yeah. So <laughs> she comes in. She, as is what happens to a lot of this movie, she almost does it. Gets real close to signing over. I think it was just all the shit she inherited as being. She was going to abdicate her position. She's she was going to abdicate. Like- yeah, because the idea being that some of the law says, like, yeah, sure, you're the genetic identical code, whatever. But we also recognize that that space religion, maybe you're not fucking ready to be in charge of, like, to be a space queen. Because you're from <laughs> Cow Planet. So in those cases, you can be like, yeah, no, I'm going to go back to Cow Planet. Thanks lots. Or you could be, you know, incited to do it or what have you. So that's that's where I'm the not going to in. go into why people want to abdicate. That's a personal choice. Anyway, she almost does it. She almost signs it. Uh, and then has a great moment of, well, fuck you, no, I'm not. Her very good doggo. Very good doggo. Comes in from the storm. <gasps> crashes through a window, as he is wont to do. Yes. <laughs> Crashing in such a way that it starts destroying the entire fucking place. Yeah. He rescues her family. Space cops uh, manage to get through. Everyone gets to the ship. Jupiter... Uh, is falling behind because she has to run a different way. There's a great big chase scene. Uh, an Academy Award winner, Eddie Redmayne, <laughs> catches up, attacks her, uh, reveals that he, in fact, killed his mom. And we're all like, oh, fucking shocker, dude. And there, <laughs> was, like, oh, yes, we were there all- was no way I could possibly have seen this coming. To be fair, that's also Jupiter's point of view as well. She's like, yeah, we we know. We know. And you totally didn't have some sort of weird sexual gratification from it. We get it. <laughs> it's like, Jupiter is like, I just met you, and I know. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. You have a sort of killer vibe. Killed your mom vibe. <laughs> yeah. You just have an aura of Norman Bates. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Deep Norman Bates vibe. How does Jupiter respond to saying the mom suit that he probably still has somewhere? Oh, Oof. God. Oh, you know he does. Ugh. Uh, anyway, and then she's all like, you know what? I am not your mom. Uh, I love it. In the face. I love that. I'm not your damn mom. <laughs> Which is hilarious, yes. of course, because she's also uh, somebody who does uh, cleaning and other you know, horrible, uh, uh, stereotypical female lower cast roles in her day-to-day life. So it's, you know, messages. Go on. So she's taking out the trash, as it were. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> nice. So Academy Award winner Edwin Renmain falls to his death. Uh, Jupiter is saved by her very good doggo. The cops have to leave, but Kane and Jupiter manage to sort of trail behind the ship in their space suity things. As one does. So they manage to get through as well, and everybody's saved. Um, and everybody lives except for Academy Award winner Edwin Renmain. <laughs> wait, wait, we never saw a body. It's true. true, we never saw a body. <laughs> Academy Award winner Eddie Redmayne may return in Jupiter Ascending 2. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
Oh, uh, oh wait, movie. wait, wait. And then uh, uh, for being such a good doggo, uh, uh, Kane gets his wings back. So he resumes his full space angel werewolf form. Oh, and Jupiter's family gives her a telescope. Well, but the good doggo gives her the rocket boots, and that's clearly the better gift. Well, here's the thing. She's seen at this point what having, you know, endless amounts of wealth um, and centuries of, of bullshit entitlement has done. And she's like, you know what? I know that I have an exit, so I'm happy helping my Earth and or real, as one might say, family on this planet that I love, even though it's a cow planet, apparently, because I know that I'm doing it for my family and not because I have no other options. Uh, and so she stays in that role to stay, like, not fucking space crazy, like the entire rest of her weirdo children. <laughs> Though, could she start her trying to dismantle space capitalism? Oh, absolutely. And there's a lot of fanfic on that topic. <laughs> So, other than the, the alphabet omega and the, <laughs> the and as you, in your words, praise kink, kink fix. <laughs> uh, I have not said that once in the course of this recording. Alex said it first. <laughs> I win, fuckers. So, so yeah, that's the movie. Yep. Uh, uh, you may be able to tell. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, I didn't care for it. Not for like any like major. Like stories, and it just didn't click for me. I will say this: it's not for you. I get that. Yeah. Here's the thing: mm-hmm. I had a lot of trouble paying attention in this movie because mm-hmm. I kept yeah. looking up, going like, "Oh man, I should be really into this." This this movie has everything, <laughs> but but all the action sequences went on too long. I was like, yeah. ugh, ugh, "There are too many people, and I don't get the relationships." <sighs> the action sequences were fucking dumb. That's because it's either her acting sequences or Kane, Stinger, or Space Borg is explaining something. Mm, yeah, I mean, lots of exposition. Yeah. I will say that if they had sort of stuck with something, yes, it would be better. I personally would have preferred if they stuck with space capitalism and, and, and property shit. Because you'll notice that in my explanation, I didn't mention once the fucking roller skates. They're cool. No, they're, oh, they're so bad. They look so stupid. Uh, Kane has space roller skates that are gravity or whatever, and it allows him to go skating ground. Woo! And he- and you can fly with it. It's not like of. a jetpack. It's, it's different. Here's the thing: it was a, a different way of locomotion. Cooler. It was just really I disagree. stupid looking. And they did go on for uh, a long time. Brent, Brent, would you? Which would you? Ooh, wah, hush. A show called Captain Jetpack or a show called Captain and Rocket Boots? I know Rocket Boots does some badass too. Just saying, just saying, because we already had the Rocketeer jetpacks. They're a they're a set trope already. I hadn't seen nah. uh, Rocket Boots or la- Gravity Boots depicted in a visual medium before. So hey, I thought that was neat. They're technically the same as what Iron Man's got on his feet, but Iron Man doesn't look fucking stupid doing it. Wasn't there an episode like a? A Futurama where a fry got jet boots and like what? Oh, I'm sure. Uh, the other thing is, why have um, roller skates when you could have, for instance, an invisible motorcycle? Which I say would have been cooler. Okay, <laughs> but how more- stupid would you have looked on the invisible motorcycle? You would have looked I cool. want you to think that through. Oh, no, no, no. It's not actually invisible. Uh, it's got a, a cool light ripple effect that everybody in universe says is invisible and then we can see it. So, just imagine... So, Emperor's new motorcycle. Exactly. So, just imagine Channing Tatum just straddling a... Nothing? The empty air. Well, there's a lot of things you could do with that, that's all I'm saying. I see. (laughs) Oh, you could do, like, motorcycle tricks? To be fair, now we're starting to get into some... uh... That's dumber. (laughs) (laughs) So. Um, So. Yeah, so... So, changes. Changes. We've said the fucking story. There it is. Oh, wait, wait, we didn't get to the best part, uh, which is that, um, nodding. The end. That's all I'm gonna say. Wow, okay. Uh, you brought me here for one reason. One. Uh, you brought me out of my eternal slumber. So. After 10,000 years, you're so, free. <laughs> so. Buttons. Uh, I'm gonna go first. Uh, we alluded to it already. <laughs> uh, but what they really need to do was concentrate on one thing. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah. And I think it should have been uh, a grand space romance. Because if we're going to do this, let's, let's just fucking do this. And I am okay with just sticking with the point of view of Jupiter mm-hmm. and not getting any of the rest of the of the bullshit. <laughs> and okay, fine, weird family space space family dynamics. <laughs> but but it needed to be not that. <laughs> like really, I could have not. We could have, in my point of view, ignored all the weird time shit. Uh, and power grabs and stuff. And they could have just been, uh, everyone going like, what the fuck, mom's back. And <laughs> she's got a weird, uh, angel dog boyfriend. Yeah, she does. Pe- and we didn't really like her that much the first time around. And just dealing with that dynamic instead of murder. But Pip, mm. building the space bypass is like a classic, like a tension builder. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get rid of Earth somehow. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide reference. Yeah. Yeah. It- we filed the paperwork in, at the city office. I mean, you could have looked at it any time. And you didn't, so... Mm. That's humanity for you. Yeah. If you're not going to be interested in civil politics... That's why you should vote in even the smallest elections. It's true. So vote for your solar congressman. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it could have been about uh, Jupiter finding her place in space. Fuck, solar stockman. That's what it should have said. Yeah. Trying to figure out if she wants to be, you know, a part of this big space family, uh, who wants to reevaluate their relationship with their mom, or if she wants to stay on Earth with her Earth family and all the troubles it had, mm, mm-hmm. and learning the value of friendship and stuff like that. And, you know, the space family learning more about themselves and trying to figure out, okay, uh, what was our deal with our moms? Can we learn and grow from this? Right. That's mm. what I want. And the answer is no. Nope. Eat the rich. Yeah! yeah! Right. That's what is I that, want. So, so is that you? Can I go? That's me. Can oh, I fuck. I was going to go. Oh, fuck you, Brent. No, that's Wait, it. Alex. <laughs> Alex. Let's... Oh, brother. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The thing? We had a few too many and Kane saves the day by like, crashing through the window. Because <laughs> I'm very certain that's up to three at that point. <laughs> by the end. If there's a window, you got to jump through it. That's just a lot of windows. <laughs> I mean... We, that just speaks to to bad leash training, but <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. There's that fiction too. Wow. Uh, but no. Uh, <laughs> basically, I wanted once the space politics to start happening, and like uh, for there to be a victory through, like instead of like crashing through the window, use cunning to get out of that situation. You know. You know. For a second, I thought you were going to say use the door. <laughs> Here's the thing. I mean, she could have used the door. Uh, <laughs> I I. I like that, but I would also say that I kind of like the idea that his big deal is like crashing through windows and there could be just a great moment where she's like, kind of takes command, um, as his master is like, no, no, we can go through the door. And he's like, all right, if you. So a- a- as a, <laughs> yeah, go there's on. one thing, uh, as a, the, as the resident dog owner, uh-huh. uh, we prefer just as their human. <laughs> <laughs> Fair as enough. His human Jupiter. I would like it if she just started doing some training. Um, and it's like, no, no, we we don't need to crash through the do- window. And he could all be like, "Are you sure, though? Are you are you sure?" And she'd be like, "If you, if you, and if you want to go through the door, just ring this bell, and I can help you." <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't it be funny if he like literally? Do we ever see him actually open a door in this film? I, I, what if he can't? What if like he seems to have like working hands and shit, but the second he sees a doorknob, he just starts pawing it. <laughs> Uh, someone, someone, please let me out. I, I need to. I need to go walks. I need to go oh walkies. <laughs> you guys, when he was in the uh, ubulette or what, however you pronounce it, uh, yeah. uh, ubulette, yeah, uh, the space break. Uh, he does try to get out. What if there was a doorknob on the inside that we just didn't see? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. They're like, he'll never get out now. Isn't that where we just keep like bread? He's like, yeah, I know, but. He'll never get out of this. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> they put him in his crate. Oh, oh my god. They did. They fucking did. I love it. So yeah, but like one of the guys said, uh, I did like, and see, if you, who space law, I am, ne- I, now I own the property. Ah, but that you see, you neglected this space law. Like, <laughs> what? And like, everything that I own still belongs to me, and now I over- own everything you own. 
how does that work? Like, how is your original plan going to work? Uh, space sexism? <laughs> how great would it have been if Jupiter and youngest son got married and then she fucking killed him instead? Oh my god, so great. <laughs> it's like, well, I've got his holdings now. Uh, what if she just, like, started killing her, like, marrying and then killing all of the children one at a time? Like, they're not her kids. Darker movie. They're not her they're kids. They're not my so. kids. No. She's not their damn mom. It's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does that you, Al? Yep, that's me. Uh, Brian, right. you want to go next? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you so much. Nah, uh, Kat, you can go. You ah. can go. Thank you, Brendan. So here's the thing. Stories come in threes, right? We like it when things come in threes. We have two references to fairy tales in this movie. We have uh, Cinderella and we have Beauty and the Beast. Both of those are done in the course of the story. Um, we have Beauty and the Beast, i.e. the romance between uh, human uh, Jupiter and uh, good doggo Cain. Uh, we have Cinderella. So she's taken from a... Um, it's a rags to riches exactly. thing. And in fact, she is literally, you know, and Cinderella was literally uh, uh, supposed to be um, wealthy and whatnot, and then she was put into the situation. While Jupiter has not been put into the situation, she is in reality super rich, um, according to space religion. But those are the only two we get. Threes, man. I fucking love threes. So I'm thinking either the little Red Riding Hood. No, <laughs> we already done, yeah. we already did a dog thing. I'm thinking either Cinderella or Snow White. We already. Well, did. you already said that they did Cinderella. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Shit, who am I thinking of? Rapunzel? Sleeping Beauty, uh, Sleeping Beauty, uh, that's who I meant. So either Sleeping Beauty or uh, Snow White, and here's why. Oh god, wait, did did somebody feed Kane some chocolate? <laughs> Is that why he's sleeping? Oh <laughs> no, I was see, I was going to make Jupiter the sleeping one, so we can make, uh, but you know what, that takes away time for agency, this is a very agency film. Do both, no, they both sleep, shit. They both very famously sleep, and then, and get... <laughs> and then get saved by a fucking dude. See, I was thinking they both had evil stepmothers, so that gets into the whole stepmother thing. No, wait. Only one had an evil stepmother. The other one had a uh, evil fairy. And hospitality law, which is great. But I'm willing to take... the. Here's the thing. I just need there to be a third fairy tale, and I want the story to end up being about that. So we have... The setup is Cinderella, right? The romance is Beauty and the Beast. What's the plot? What's the action? And I want the that twelve to be a th- dancing princesses. <gasps> oh my god! Hmm? Except she's the. Oh fuck! Wait, well. So do you guys know the story of the twelve dancing princesses? Nope. Uh, okay, can't recall it now. It is one of my favorites. It's my second favorite. My first favorite, obviously, is Bluebeard. Uh, my second favorite <laughs> is twelve dancing princesses. Yeah, I I feel like so much is said about you in just that one sentence. Thank you. <laughs> um, she says, laughing evilly. I've got a suggestion for a different fairy tale. Oh, yeah. Thousand Furs. <gasps> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Al, can you describe that? Describe it. Uh, basically, there's this princess. She's got, uh, she's got situations that which involve of either her having to marry some dude she doesn't want to or, or some, sh- uh, some shit. Uh, she gets it's gifted. Here's like a coat made of a thousand fucking furs. Where's this? No one will, will recognize you. Ooh, she puts it on. No one recognizes her. Or she... He goes about safely. He has like some sort of like monster in the woods or something. And then, then so, and then some prince, then I think some prince do. And Francis like, Francis is like, Hey, you're, you're all right. Uh, Want to live a happy and free life? And, and she's like, Sure. Eh. And like, cool. But, and she's like, By the way, I'm actually beautiful. Oh, bonus. I would like to point out that this is not the version of Thousand Furs that I know. <laughs> I've forgotten <laughs> Thousand Furs. <Cat. laughs> just, no. You just gave That's a fine. bullshit fairy tale? Fucking yeah. Because <gasps> okay, Thousand Furs is in no. fa- Yes! I'm gonna- you can cut it from the edit. <laughs> Here's the thing, we also need to go to bed at some point. Uh, yes. It's, uh, it's a story about her dad, okay? <laughs> and she has a walnut with three beautiful dresses. You're right. Thank you. There. See? <laughs> okay. But So, how do we adapt this into Jupiter Jones? <laughs> Uh, if she could go, uh, she could be told that she is the, uh, space queen and, uh, with the help of her good doggo, she can, in fact, uh, instead disguise herself as a random person, uh, going about and then trying to solve this issue, not from the wealthy point of view, but from the, uh, uh, working class that she has always been. 
and she has more understanding of than her other family. She uses Kane as and uh, as a guide through that system, and coincidentally helps the aud- audience get guided as well. Um, then the bureaucracy scene that's from Brazil makes more sense. And uh, oh yeah, and Thousand First is also oh weirdly incestuous. Yes, it is. Oh, it super is. And then she can solve the whole Space Queen thing and then reveal herself at the end as a thousand first revealed herself at the end. There could be a very fun, oh, but can I marry you? And she'd be like, nah, I'm going to marry my dog. And the end. But I like that. I like the idea of her um, uh, doing a thousand first uh, by going in disguise as lower class uh, through this system. And then if they could do something involving salt, that'd be pretty cool too. Nifty. That's my change. My change is basically to add a third fairy tale. The end. (laughs) The end, as all fairy tales end. (laughs) So, uh, before I go into mine, uh, one thing I would probably recognize with this movie is I'm betting... Actually, I think I remember even hearing that, like, I think this was intended to be a trilogy originally, and it was all heavily compacted into one film. Oh, Oh, that would explain a lot. That would explain so much. Three siblings, three movies. (gasps) Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because first movie, you get the eternal youth thing and the glitz and the glamour and ascending. And then the second movie, we get the climactic finish at a uh, wedding being disrupted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It and then it's only one crashing through a window per movie. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's totally reasonable. And for some odd reason, Kane gets put in his crate every single movie. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> that being said, if I were to uh, try to compress this down or just change it myself a much as i love mila kunis i don't think she was good for the role uh like i, I want to see somebody who can really command presence and i just did not get it from her performance in this film me. i'm just sticking to that um but plus i just like because i did not i didn't really get strong emotion at all oh. like Bo- bonus, she speaks Russian. She does. I, don't, I I think I would have like much preferred like I don't know like Brie Larson or kind of somebody can really I don't know. But one thing that kind of came to my mind is oh oh sorry one sec is that Kane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Benji came back into the room. Aww. So aside from stretching this out into three movies, which. Seems like the real uh, deal here. The one thing that I kind of would want to play with instead of uh, having this whole entire eternal youth gel thing is just straight make it up as, like, ownership of that sector of space. Like, Earth is, like, happens to be the really good place for warp space bypasses or whatever, like the the Sol sector or what what have you. So so what I'm thinking with with, uh, Jupiter Jones here is I'm, I'm thinking uh, one of her parents was like a long lost Abraxas, uh, a family member who ran away, became the long lost uh, cousin or who knows what. But like through, again, that genetic weirdness, that's how we get uh, the the Jupiter connection there. Well, either that or Mr. Jarvis was like her dad. Mm. Yeah. Who played Jarvis on, on uh, what's it called? That show. Uh, uh, Peggy Carter. uh yeah, on, on Peggy Carter. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be pretty great if he was the random runaway. Yeah. Jarvis yeah. Abraxas. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. So, like, that that's what I think would be kind of, like, a little bit easier for, like, an audience member, cough, me, cough, to really easily digest as I'm watching through this. It's like, oh, okay, it's a line of inheritance that I can clearly at least have an easier time following than this oh, she's actually the gen- genetic clone of her mother or uh, of uh, their the Abraxas mother or whatever. That just seemed different and weird to me. But, like, long-lost uh, family members suddenly coming back from, like, this backwater planet, which, come on, yeah, Earth is a backwater planet. Absolutely. All of a sudden, she shows up and throws all this family chaos into disarray. Uh, <laughs> chaos into disarray, that makes sense. <laughs> Because, like, I'm a big fan of, like, the Dune series, so I can get behind family political drama and all that. I just want to have it be, like, a strong connection 
and we don't need to have bees swarming around her unless that's just going to be a consistent superpower throughout the rest of the movie in which she just unleashes a jar of bees on uh, Eddie Redmayne at the end of the picture, which would be kind of amazing. I mean, that's what should have happened. She should have had swarm powers. Yes. Should have. And then, and we, then we could have gotten a Academy Award winning Eddie Redmayne going, No! Not the bees! <laughs> Uh, (laughs) i will hive her Uh, wow yeah when i was watching i thought the connection was going to be jarvis the dad uh and then it wasn't i think that could have been an easy change to do where it's like oh that's clearly he's clearly an alien hey cool that's how this happened because like we don't necessarily need to have like like oh we're harvesting humans in a clear uh allegory for capitalism yeah i don't necessarily think you need that if it's just land rights to a primo section of space that's suddenly being a lot more popular now we can explain that like maybe there is like some sort of like connection to that time stuff i don't know maybe we could keep the the humans being used to process the to to make time goop but i don't know i i just like the idea of royals plague around with property rights and jupiter is just this sudden heir of herod that appears from literally nowhere and that is the political drama that throws everything out of whack and then we could have more assassins we could have <laughs> uh more balls that would be uh also poor kane uh, uh i i feel like there's something in the movie about bodily autonomy uh mm-hmm. and having control of things like that and who's in control of your body yeah, but also the basically the genetic essentialism is kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, just a bit. Yeah, and is there really any ethical time consumption under space capitalism? <laughs> there really isn't. <laughs> oh, I mean, I saw that Jabu nut latte, and I know where Jabu nuts come from, <laughs> and I drank it anyway. Oh man, so is that you? That's me. It's not a strong uh, finish there, but, you know, I just like Dune, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somebody has to. Whoa! Hey! I'm so- I've never even read Dune. That's <laughs> that's unfair of me. I want to take my still suit and leave. The, oh. the time must flow? Spice must flow. Oh, time must... Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. Thank you, Al. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Al, you can walk without rhythm with me. Uh, really? It's without rhythm? Like, isn't it just, like, walk super slow? No, it's 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 walking without rhythm. That's I've got rhythm. I've no, got music. music. I've oh, got my. I've got my, my man. man. Wait, you've got my liking. Ask for anything more. You've got your liking. Anyway, uh, let's quickly do some games. Alex is right. I do have my liking, and that was wrong of me. <laughs> anyway, what game do we want to play today, you guys? Gosh. Uh. Uh. Everything changed when the baristas attacked. Oh, that's a good one. We do that one. Yeah. Let's play Everything Changed When the Baristas Attacked. And can you explain that one for the listening audience? It's just the AU game, where we make it an alternate universe in the grand old fanfic tradition. Which, of Ooh. course, is what this story fucking is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This, this this whole movie is, is tropes. Tropes all the way down. <laughs> okay. So who wants to go first? I will. I'm going to go first. Oh. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah, well, you can go, Alex. Okay. College AU. Fuck. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Make up. Who's the tutor? No, you know damn Who's well the who the professor? tutor is. Like, Stinger Who's sub- in a sorority? <laughs> Stinger, Stinger's the professor, Kane's the tutor, Jupiter is the, is the astronomy student. <gasps> oh my god, she's a legacy? But she, no, she's not a legacy stu- Yeah, she's a legacy, but also a, um, uh, 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 poor. Yes, she's, scholarship. She starts out as a scholarship student. She learns that, and then she he learn, learns through she runs through coincidence that she's also a legacy. Because when she tries to join the local, no, she gets approached by the local sorority. No, it's the honor society. by like the mean girls. No, she get, <gasps> she's going to she's trying to enter the honor society. Are they mean? Are they mean girls? I mean, Pip, you've been in an honor society, right? Uh, the English honor society. <laughs> How is it? Uh uh, See, I was gonna go with sorority because then they could be like, "Oh my god, you have to join!" And that's how. She, but she like they're not telling her the full truth, which mm-hmm. is yeah, that, like that 
which is that uh, she's like actually legacy, and then if they can get her in her their sorority, then uh, a grant gets uh, deposited with them. But like none of them are telling her that, and there's different kinds of mean girls which match up with the uh, Braxis siblings. Yeah, one who wants to fuck her, and then another one who also wants to fuck her, but in a relationship kind of way. <laughs> It could all be different, like uh, fraternities and sorority. Oh, no, no, uh, never mind. That makes no, sense. Uh, yeah. Academy Award winner Ed Redmayne is like is like the school chancellor. Like, is he? Because he wants to fuck over the, the school. Yeah. Hmm. I like he's a newly elected uh, chancellor for the school, and he has some changes that he wants to make to make the school better. <laughs> and he's going to shake things up up a bit with the departments. Womp womp. I will fire her! <laughs> I love that. Uh, That's amazing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, can I go? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would... Um, <laughs> alternate universe-wise, I would like this to be a soul mark universe. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh marks, yeah. Yeah. Soul marks where you... Um, uh, are born with or at some key part like puberty or something a a mark appears on your body somewhere uh that connects you with your soulmate um that mark can be things like oh the first word that they ever say to you or their name or uh, some shit something like that anyway in this movie it's established that kane doesn't like noble people <gasps> uh-oh he's got somebody's name jupiter something and she's got his name, Kane something, and he's like, I've, I can't believe I actually found you. And then she's like, Oh, that's amazing. I really like dogs. And then somebody else pops up and is like, Oh, by the way, you're entitled and a noble. And he's like, Oh, I can't love her. And like, that's the entire story. Right? She's like, But you can love me because we're soulmates. And he's like, But I can't. Maybe you're not even really my soulmate, even though I feel this unbelievable, uh, uh connection to you. So, Almost like what soulmates have, <laughs> but I can't. I have. I can't get over myself. So when the name first appears on Kane's on somewhere mm-hmm. on Kane's body, it doesn't have to be his own. It can be someone. It can be, can be so- somewhere else. Any number of fascinating places. Yeah. Uh, Oof. And like he's like, and he sees that, and he goes, "Jupiter, I fall in love with a planet." <laughs> like it's an okay like, planet. Yeah. Oh, but, oh my god, what if it's not even a common name and he's like, oh, I'll never be able to find them. Maybe that's why, maybe that just proves I'm a bad doggo. Because obviously all lichens, you know, we all like, all of our names are, like, dog related. And this isn't dog related. (laughs) I really expected to have somebody's name, like, uh... Spot. Late, lady. (laughs) Like, would have really been, what's really holding out for, like, someone called Cerberus, but yeah. Yeah, that would have been cool. Hardcore, yeah. But but then he meets her and he, he's like, oh, I, I could do this. This works out for me. And then, dun dun dun, revelation. And the entire thing is him having to fucking get over himself. But her realizing, you know what? Like, I've just discovered uh, uh that it turns out my soulmate is a fucking alien. But maybe I don't need soulmates if he's going to be such a fucking dick about it. And so that's her journey. Because she keeps thinking that, you know, if she only found her soulmate, she'd be able to get out of her cir- current circumstances. Maybe she doesn't believe in soulmates because of what happened with her dad. Oh, <gasps> with her parents. Oh, yeah. oh shit. In fact, her oh, and her mom's like, don't do it. Don't believe it. Cause you know what got me here? And she's like, I'm here. And she's, thanks, mom. <laughs> 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 oh my God. But then she, so she's fighting against herself and then he's being a massive dick about it. And she's like, well, I guess I was right after all. Mom was right. But then she has to learn anyway. And then he has to get over himself. Oh, oh, and meanwhile, the Abraxas siblings pop up for and unrelated reasons, like not because they're related. And they're like, by the way, uh, you're, you're a space princess and, uh, don't worry, soulmates don't actually exist. This is just a funny thing we all talk about in space. You can marry for other reasons, like say, buying planet reasons. Oh. <laughs> by the way, what's your, uh, what are, by the way, hey, what, what's your soul mark? Oh, we don't have them. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. You know, once you're old and rich enough, you don't need to have soulmates. That's kind of, yeah. We have those removed because honestly, it's really a plebeian thing. Oh, oh my God, that's really dark. Note to self: write that. <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, anyway, that's mine. All right. Uh, Very romance. You know what I'm tempted to do just to be that guy? Oh We're shifting this into the Dune universe, God you jerks! Wow. 
Wow. The time must flow. <laughs> the time must flow, assholes. Because That's you know herb. what? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, now, um, not really, though. It'd be kind of a pretty cut and dry uh, Dune story. Let's be real here, because Earth has, of course, lots of spice. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, <laughs> Uh, but let's, let's, uh, let's have some fun here, cause you know what? I'm thinking MCU. That's right. Ooh, huh. Kane also has superpowers. And over the course of the story, Jupiter gets to learn that maybe she has some little spark of something in her too. Aww. All right. Because you know what? Owning a planet, that's gotta come with extra perks. There's the bee controlling thing. What if she could suddenly, like, control swarms of, like, nano robots? Yes. What if she can control, like, uh, toward the end of the story, like, a fleet of spaceships are attacking the Earth, like, you know, uh, Infinity War style? And then it's like, wait a second. A swarm of spaceships, wouldn't you say? Whoa. <laughs> Because that is just stupid enough that it seems like fun to me. Love it. I'm a, I'm and Sean Bean has acid spit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually a big fan of of writing something or or you know creating something that's stupid, but you're having fun with it. Like having fun with it seems to be like such a huge part of of creating. Yeah. And I mean, it can be as stupid as you damn well please, but you know. As long as you're having fun doing it, then that kind of shines through. And to be honest, that's part of why I like this movie. It's stupid as fuck, but you can tell that the Wachowskis were really like, this is a movie we want to do. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I right, definitely. Like, I'll, I'll actually defend like, uh, like Speed Racer and stuff like that, because you know what? That's like watching the world melt around you and you don't necessarily care. <laughs> it's the, like watching the movies are the equivalent of uh, make them laugh from Dancing in the uh, Dancing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain. Yes. Uh, and make them laugh is an important part of uh, the movie. Broadway melody uh, is the one that is just sort of there. Broadway melody is bullshit. Hmm. All right. So for my idea... Let's just go to the good old classic coffee shop. <laughs> There's the Abraxix coffee shop, which is in no way Starbucks. <laughs> you will brew her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there's the tiny local uh, coffee shop, which is in no way Earth. Uh, the Abraxis wants to take over that tiny little coffee shop, uh, and they want to do it through corporate espionage. Uh, cause who doesn't love a little bit of corporate espionage stuff? I don't know. That sentence did not work out for me. Uh, they try to send Kane over to do shit, but instead Kane (laughs) looks at Jupiter and goes, oh no. (laughs) And it's just the entire time him not being able to do sabotage shit. And then, I don't know, Jupiter takes over Starbucks. (laughs) Hooray! Or the very least, drives him out of town. Oh, yeah. That's my AU. Yeah, you could combine it with the college AU and make it the uh, the coffee shop that's on the quad. I mean, honestly, I could bundle this in with uh, Enemies to Lovers uh, if yes. Kane goes in to destroy the coffee shop and then doesn't. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. Sometimes yes. we should we should talk mm. about Enemies to Lovers and how great that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's me. Awesome. Guys, are we done? I believe we're done. I feel like we're done. No, I, th- I think we're done. Uh, before we go, does anyone have anything to plug? I wonder what the answer will be. Hmm. As a matter of fact, I do. Um, <laughs> what? So there's an answer to this question that we've never asked before? <laughs> that we haven't really integrated into our uh, end of episode uh, uh, stuff? No. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we, ha- we totally have an answer. Uh, guys... Um, I actually have a short story out, a brand new short story out through uh, the online magazine Daily Science Fiction. Uh, it's called They're Made Out of Corn. And uh, it's a short science fiction story that's sort of a, um, a continuation or pastiche of the uh, Terry Bison story, They're Made Out of Meat. Uh, so, yeah, if you go to my website, uh, CatherineCrichton.com, or... <laughs> Or to Daily Science Fiction and uh, look up my name or They're Made Out of Corn. You can read it yourself. 
Uh, and I feel like it's important for everyone to know that when you read it, you need to read it in my and Kat voice. It's mine and Pippin's voice, to be fair. Um, uh, when I was describing the story to Pippin uh, during a car ride once, she proceeded to make the exact same joke that appears within the story without knowledge that it was coming. Because to be fair, I think I phrased it better than you did, but yeah, that's me. fucking wow. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Who's the one who's published on this call? <clears throat> Pippin? I mean, I do have some nonfiction published. Hey, how's your book coming? Hey, Pep Sam. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wanted to hear Brendan's question. <laughs> hey, Pep Sam. Yeah, yeah. High five. Same as in you both have books that are in progress. <clears throat> Though only one of you, Pippin, has editors actively asking for it. Well, I'm going to say on that one. Hey, Brent, you got anything to plug? Uh, not this week, but, uh, I do sometimes do, uh, improv on the internet sometimes because, you know, I'm a guy in my thirties with no kids. <laughs> <laughs> but you're- And a dog. I feel like that's important. And a dog, yeah. But you are in a relationship, so really, the, uh, you've already got- Step up. Yeah. <laughs> that helps. Um. Way to break those stereotypes. <laughs> the thing is, I'm not named Mike. Ooh. Uh. Or Dan. But I do wear flannel sometimes, oh, so. that's tough, oh, yeah. that's tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but when yeah. those come out, uh, if people um, go to your Twitter account, I think that you reference them there. You let people know. I do sometimes. Yay! Uh-huh. Yay! Um, and if you want to find out where Brendan's Twitter is, honestly, go to the No Story of Sacred Twitter account, because we all tend to respond to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoops. So. Uh, anybody else have anything? Nah. That's a whole no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Al's playing some great video games lately. Not on Twitch or anything no, like just, that. Just, just playing. Now, yeah. My Animal Crossing island is doing amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to get an invitation to her island, please tweet us at nostorysacred.com. Wait. <laughs> Some people might take you up on that if the uh, turn up prices are high enough. <laughs> Actually, I've been playing Lego Star Wars, so really, the the, the bar is kind of low for me. <laughs> 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 All right. As always, if you have an idea or prompt to submit, head on over to nostorysacred.com slash submission. Follow us on Twitter at NoStorySacred, or send an email through contact at NoStorySacred.com. Your hosts have been Alec McDonald, Brandon McDonald, Pippin McDonald, and Catherine Crichton. Editing for this episode done by Brendan. Transcript done by Ashley DaCosta. Art by Jay Wolf. Show notes and transcript are available at NoStorySacred.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. And please rate, review, and subscribe to No Story Sacred. You can also visit our Patreon page to support the show and get neat rewards at Patreon.com slash NoStorySacred. See you next time when we return to the Wheel of Tropes. Dun, dun, dun. Tropes, 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 <laughs> Everybody! Until then, where no story is sacred and any story can be changed. I'm Alex. I'm Kat. I'm Brendan. And I'm Pippin. And we're No, no Story is Sacred. Is sacred. sacred.